Hi, I'm Clint Cooper, the emissions technology expert at AP Emissions. I'm here with Ryan McDonough, our manufacturing and product expert to discuss manufacturing process. Ryan, I've got some questions for you. You know, most of the time I'm out in the field doing sales or technical training. Uh, what I'd like to know is how we go about producing so many parts. In our last video, we talked about how we go about prototyping those parts, but now let's talk about production. So what's the first step once we've come up with that jig, we've got our fixture, how do we go about producing these parts in volume? There's thousands of components that go into these things. So the first step is gathering the right components okay. to make the part that you're, you're trying to make. Rather than have a welder in their work cell weld a part on a single jig on a stationary table, we have multiple jigs on a carousel table that rotates in and out of their work cell so they don't need to wait for the part to cool down or a fixture to be picked up and moved into place. Nice, so the welders can focus on welding while the separate assembler puts the parts in the fixture. So we've got a, a catalog of a bunch of bended elbows at 45 degrees and 35 degrees and some flanges and straight tubes of various lengths, right? And so when we go to develop that part, that, that part has a bill of materials that calls out those specific parts that have to be put into that fixture. Is that, that the way it goes? That's right? exactly right. Okay. Uh, how many fixtures do we have? How many can we make at the simultaneously for a typical part? So overall, we probably have two, three, four thousand fixtures. Wow, that's a ton. Um, how many parts? We have well, we have three facilities in Goldsboro, North Carolina, Langhorne, Pennsylvania, and Hobart, Indiana. Okay. So between the three facilities, we are producing upwards of 150 part numbers at the same time. At the same time. So simultaneously, we could be cranking on 150 catalytic converters simultaneously. That's correct. That's amazing. So when we're doing a run, do we typically do, um, are, are we usually simultaneously manufacturing lots of different parts at the same time? Or are we usually just focusing on one part and major volume for that one part? We're making many different parts at the same time. For example, in the Langhorn facility, we have upwards of 40 welders. All could be making a different part and mass quantities of each part. Okay, so this isn't like robots and you know big robotic arms welding this stuff. These are people in welding booths and creating these parts individually from the jigs that we've created. Right? That's correct. These are welding experts and, and craftsmen. Great. Um, do the welders put the, the individual components into those jigs or does somebody else do that? That's a great question. So old school, yes. The welder would set the part up for himself and weld it. These days, we've introduced our carousel system okay. where there's a support person who helps the welder get the part, get the components in the fixtures so the welder can weld. So somebody goes out, they get the components, they lock them into the fixture, and then spin that carousel into the welding booth where the welder just focuses on welding. That's right. They're done welding, they spin it out, and the next part just comes right in, right? Gives it time to cool down and a, a quality check. That's important. The, the time for it to cool down, a lot of times that stainless steel wants to bend back to its original shape, so you need to leave it in that jig for a nice long time so it stays in the shape it's supposed to be, right? That, coupled with our welder's experience mm -hmm. and their knowledge of uh, how to weld a part right. the, the correct way, helps with keeping that uh, part in the fixture, correct. So you mentioned quality control. How do we check the quality of our parts? So we can check the quality uh, a bunch of ways in our fixtures. Uh, against the OE that we have, we have master samples and also our fit check photos also help. So put a QC stamp on it once it's produced, once we check to make sure that it's accurate and then we box it up and put it on our shelves. Don't forget the bag of parts. Oh, the bag of parts, absolutely. So. All of our converters are gonna come with the gaskets and the bolts needed to install that part. So when the car's on the lift, you don't have to worry about, do I have this gasket or anything else? It comes in the box, right? That's correct, Clinton. Great, is there anything else to talk about manufacturing? Or is that pretty much it? I think that sums it up, Clint. Excellent. In this video, we've talked about our manufacturing procedures, how we go about manufacturing that part and doing a production run. Uh, in our previous video, we talked about how we prototype parts. In our next video, we're gonna be talking about an important topic to everybody, and that is catalytic converter theft. Thanks for watching.